الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي يا الله in the beginning of this class I seek your pardon for me, my family, my students, my brothers, my teachers, my sisters in Islam, and all those mu'min and mu'min, mu'minat and mu'minin. Ya Allah, make us amongst them. Ya Rabb, protect our brothers and sisters who are traveling, especially those in Umrah. Bring them safe, accept their Umrah, forgive their sins. And may Allah grant shifa to all of you, inshallah. Any question before we start? Ah, there was a very good question from one of the sisters. I want to answer it before I go, although it has nothing to do with our subject, which is about wudu. Uh, in a couple of lectures last week, we talked about uh, hadith al-wudu. Imam, we are doing sharh al-imam, imam al sharh sahih al-imam al-Bukhari. Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari. So we were studying the hadith, and one of the hadith is that somebody asked the Prophet Sallallahu what makes uh, uh, an exit of air from the stomach of a person nullify wudu. What will make it nullify wudu? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Either you hear a noise or you smell something, one of them. If both, even sure. If you hear and smell, definitely you lost your wudu. You must renew your wudu before you pray. Or if you are praying and you pass air, la haya afil ilm, we shouldn't be shy in seeking knowledge. You fart, as the, the British say and the uh, Americans, um, you pass يخرج من كريح some kind of angin comes out of you. Is, so she's asking, how about if I don't hear noise but I feel something? If you feel something, it means it's air. If you feel, it means you have felt. But if just you imagine, you imagine, you just imagine that there is something out of you. In this case, continue your salat or don't renew your wudu. So either you smell something or you hear something. The hadith is very clear. Now, hearing is like feeling. You feel something came out of you. That's no doubt. You make wudu. And, but you didn't feel, you're just imagining. Al Yaqinu la yazuru bi shak, as Al Imam Muhammad ibn Idris Shafi'i rahimahullah says, Yaqin cannot be removed by doubt unless you hear or you smell, or both of them. If no hearing, no smelling, continue your salat. It's just shaitan trying to disturb you. Any question about? About this, about what I said just now. Okay, then we continue with our beautiful book, Atlas of the Quran. Atlas of the Quran. We are in page 153. Iram, Iram that al Imad, Iram that al Imad, Iram, mentioned in Surah Al Fajr. What is Iram? Where was it? And what's the story of Iram? Iram, my sisters and brothers, is something 
incredible a miracle of the Quran. Nobody knew there was a city called Iram until the Quran mentioned it. Because Allah covered it with sand. So nobody knew. Until the Quran mentioned it. When the Quran mentioned it, archaeologists discovered it. So it was not in any book of history you don't find. Until the Quran 1400 years ago mentioned it. So people were asking, what is Iram? And Allah says, and Iram that al Iman. Iram that al Iman, the city of pillars. So they found great city under the stand with pillars. Whole city covered with sand. Allahu Akbar. Not, not a palace, not neighborhood, not, uh, tell me about it, one house. Allahu Akbar. So how big, how big is this issue of MashaAllah, Iram. Iram adhat al -Iman. Let's see. Iram is in between Oman and Yemen. Oman and Yemen. This area here. Where the people of Hud alayhi salam used to live. Who are his people? Ad. And subhanAllah, this morning, in the Fsir Surah Shu'ara, those who attend that class in the morning have definitely enjoyed some knowledge about Ad, the people of Hud alayhi salam. So let's find out who are they and what they are doing. Iram were very tall people. And therefore, their pillars must have been taller for Sheikh Zubair to be in this room. At least the ceiling has to be two meters and a half. Imagine Sheikh Zubair was 12 meters tall. What type of ceiling I need? So the pillars must be high. So why the city had high, tall pillars? Because those people were giants. They're literally giants. For you to understand, I always give this example and uh, all my students are like shocked. Do you know Hakim uh, O'Neill or uh, Hakim Olujuan or Shaquille O'Neill? Do you know how tall they are? Those are babies when their mothers give them birth. Huh? The tallest basketball player is a baby. That's his mother just gave him birth. That's how tall they were. That's how strong they were. And they lived in this place called Iram, which is now the empty quarter because the curse of Allah fell on them. We will see their story. I, I, I really insist that you attend the stories of the prophets and the tafsir. Like that you, inshallah, build on the knowledge. If you can, of course. Okay. So if you look at the map, since we need to do a deal, this is the Red Sea, Bahr al-Ahmar. This is the, the Sea of the Arabs. And this is the Indian Ocean. This area here in red is called Iram, between Yemen and Oman. That land was one of the richest lands on earth. Allah gave them everything, including children. Uh, children are blessings and cattle. And they had access to the sea. They had jannatin wa uyun. And I told you the word jannah does not mean only paradise. I was explaining that last night. And here today in Surah Shu'ara, Allah says that the people of Hud, alayhi salam, Ad, whom Allah destroyed, were in Jannat al-Uyun, 
Jannat on earth, gardens and springs. Yet some of you want Adam السلام, to be born in Jannah. Where are we going to go? Anyways, so let's see who are Iram that Al Imad. Then we go to another subject the dwellers of Ras, Ashabu Ras. I would like to ask one of you to read. Let's start with Sister Naslini. Go ahead. You have the book? Uh, yes, she, I have. Yes, please. 154. Iram Datul Imat. The structures of this place are described in the Quran as being very tall, like lofty pillars the like of which were not created in the land. Some say that this place is Alexandria. Others maintain that it is Damascus, and yet others whose opinion is strongest by dint of stronger proof say that it is a city near Aden, between Sana'a and Hadramaut. The following is an entry from Mojam al Buldan. Some say that it is a land that has been blotted out, and so its exact whereabouts remain unknown. Others say that it is Alexandria, yet most say that it is Damascus. Others have related that Iram Datul Imad is in Yaman, between Hadramaut and Sana built by Shadad bin Ad. Saw you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not how your Lord dealt with art people of Iram, who were very tall, like lofty pillars, the like of which were not created in the land, and with Tamut people who hewed out rocks in the valley to make dwellings, and with Firaun, Pharaoh, who had the stakes to torture men by binding them to the stakes, who did transgress beyond bounds in the lands in the disobedience of Allah and made therein mass mischief. So your Lord poured on them different kinds of severe torment. Verily, your Lord is ever watchful over them. Very good. There was a man, king of the Arabs by the name of Shaddad, Shaddad ibn Ad. He was so powerful. Sisters and brothers, we need to study the, the history of the Arabs. This man was so powerful. Allah gave him so much power physically and in his kingdom. That's why the Arabs always speak about, uh, do you think you are Shaddad bin Ad? Somebody may tell you. He is like, 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 like a celebrity. This Shaddad, he was the son of Ad. Ad was the son of one of the sons of Nuh السلام. So after the Nuh السلام, descended with his believers from the ark, laden ark, and Allah gave a second chance for humanity to reproduce, Ad was a very powerful man. He had a son, his name Shaddad, Shaddad ibn Ad. He is the one who built this city. His soldiers were very tall, very strong, big, huge. So therefore, they had to raise the ceilings when they build their homes and palaces. So he built a new city. You think what, Putrajaya? You think Putrajaya? He built a new city. Now, although some historians said it could be Alexandria, it could be Damascus, and Iskandaria in Egypt, and Dimashq in Syria, but there are less evidences about that. The strongest evidence come from the Quran. When Allah said in Surah uh, Al-Fajr, Surah 89, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرٍ وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرِ وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَسْرْ هَلْ فِي ذَلِكَ قَسَمٌ لِذِي حِجْرٍ أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِعَادٍ 
Ad. He mentioned Ad. And Ad is the father of Shaddad. And the people of Ad, people of Hud, alayhi salam, called Ad, lived in Yemen. Actually, between Yemen and Oman. So they were Yemenis. No doubt in Alexandria, in Egypt, and Damascus, in Syria, there are tall buildings. But Allah didn't mention Ad for Syria and for Alexandria. When he mentioned Ad, it means Yemen. So that's the strongest evidence that it was in Yemen. And do not underestimate Yemeni, Yemeni people, brothers and sisters. They are very, very smart and very civilized. And they are the asal of the Arabs. The asal, the, 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 the root of the Arabs are Yemenis. You need to know this, mashallah. So the Yemenis have huge history, including the queen of Sheba, Malik al Saba, when we saw the story of Sulaiman alayhi salam. So from the dawn of history, they have been people of civilization. It's just the West always looked down at our brothers. And had it not been for war and politics, Yemen would have been one of the greatest countries in the world. Just look at the strategic position of Yemen. Yemen is very, very strategic. And there is a lot of oil in Yemen. It's just Saudi Arabia doesn't let them produce because if they let them produce, ah, geopolitics. Anyways, so Allah said, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi'ad iram adhati al-iman. Right away. Ad, their city is iram. Full of high, lofty, tall uh, pillars. So it's good to know ge geography of the Quran. Oh, Iram. So Ad had a huge city called Iram. That Iram was covered by the sand. It was discovered only maybe 300, 400 years ago, while the Quran mentioned it 1500 years ago. We all knew they, they were Ad, but where? Where they were living? Allah said, Ad. There was a prophet called Hud, alayhi salam. There are many ahadith about Hud and Ad. But where? So the Quran comes and teaches us, Allahu Akbar, where we find. So geography is very important, my sisters. History is extremely important. Geography also very important. And pay attention to the geography. Pay attention to the geography. The world will change because of geography. Wars happen usually, why? When somebody wants more piece of land, and the geography keep changing. Countries mix. Look at Europe, European Union from tiny, tiny, small countries like Luxembourg and Belgium, look now, they are, they are part of a bigger nation called EU. Britain, that was huge a few centuries ago, became too little, but still you call it United Kingdom and Great Britain. Anyways, look at Australia. Look at New Zealand. That's British. So the UK is spreading world, worldwide. Very smart. The French shrinking, eh, whatever. The point I'm making is pay attention to the geography and learn geography. Each one of you should have a map in his house. Map, world map. And from time to time, educate yourself. Learn something. Very, very important. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh Muhammad, didn't you see what, what Allah did to, to Ad, who lived in Iram, who had lofty, tall pillars? They were so giant. 
that their houses were, I don't know how many meters high, because they were tall. Still, the point is Allah destroyed them. Why he destroyed them? Two reasons, shirk, and they were extravagant, as we have seen this morning in Tafsir Surah Shu'ala. Atabnuna bi kulli ri'in ayatan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, told them through Prophet Hud alayhi salam, are you building palaces in every high place, which is happening in Saudi Arabia? In every hill, there is almost a palace. You are not even living there. Many Muslims also today suffering from this extravagance, meaning you have more than you need. And then you cannot manage at a certain age. Why don't you live within your means? Buy Akhira with whatever Allah gave you. Book your seats in Akhira. Don't forget your share of the dunya. Enjoy life, but not until you start throwing money right and left. They were throwing money literally right and left. They had more than they needed. And when Hud السلام, advised them to fear Allah, stop the shirk, and stop being extravagant, meaning wasting, they were really wasting money and wealth. Like some Muslims, too much luxury. Why a to toilet has to be golden? Why your car has to be full of uh, diamond, covered with diamond? Like that prince of Saudi Arabia called Walid bin Talal. Mercedes, you didn't know, you didn't find how to paint it. You paint it with glue, glue. He glues the, uh, this is not a joke. This is true. Huh? Imagine the whole car, Mercedes, it shines, shines, diamond. While Muslims are dying with, in Syria with hunger. And as I sent you the, I hope you, you watch the, 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 the video I sent you or what we do, alhamdulillah. And I hope you help us support that cover, that cover we gave them. Those blankets we gave those refugees in the northern part of Syria. That's Syria, not Turkey. Those are the refugees of Syria, speaking about. When they find some warm, Allah will warm you up in your grave, cover you in dunya, cover you yawm al-qiyamah in akhirah. You cover the Muslim, Allah will cover you. You cover the Muslim, you give them some warm, those children covered with their mom and elderly, whoever, grandma, grandpa, Allah will cover you. Cover your sins, cover your faults. May Allah bless you all. So that is Iram, which is mentioned in the Quran. Anyone has question about Iram, only about this. Assalamu alaikum, Yair Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam, Dr. Sam. Would, would this Iran be uh, far away from the floods of Noah alayhi salam, or the Ark of Noah's Ark, they call it? Ah, very good. Where the Ark of Noah alayhi salam landed, it was Judy, Mount Judy in Turkey. Noah alayhi salam. When Allah ordered the earth to suck the water and ordered the sky to stop raining, his ark landed on a mountain called Wastawat Al Judi, Mount Judi. Mount Judi is in Turkey. So it landed there, and Noah السلام, after Allah allowed him, opened the gates of that ship, which was a huge ship. It wasn't a normal ship. And flooded, opened for the animals to get out, the birds to fly from their cages so that life reproduce. Now, Ad were centuries after Noah alayhi salam, meaning people reproduced, which means that Noah alayhi salam was also very tall, very tall. Because remember, the first human being, Adam alayhi salam, was 12 meters tall. 
You think he was like you and me, Dr. Saeed? How can he survive? Lion, a lion will eat him if he was just like you and me. Because there was only one man and one woman on earth. So what you, you and me see as a cat, that was the lion for him. For Adam and Eve, the lion was a cat. Otherwise, what, one lion will eat Adam and Eve. How do you survive? So they were not. As population grew, Allah made humans shorter and they used to live longer. They used to live at least 1,200 years. 1,200 years, which is today 120, 120 years. So Allah shortened the humans and shortened their life. We are living now shorter than our ancestors. And they were taller and bigger than us. Otherwise, they couldn't survive. They wouldn't survive. So when Allah created Adam, he was four stories tall, 12 meters. There are many ahadith about it. Yes, you think he was your size or my size? They have no chance to survive like that. Especially there was no one with them, a man and a woman. So as Allah gave them children, then Shu'aib um, Idris السلام, came, then Nuh السلام, came, then uh, Hud السلام, and Salih. After Hud and Salih, shorter and life also, life was short. And as we are getting closer to Yom al Qiyamah, the livelihood of many of us will be shortened. Just look at these viruses, what they are doing. Yeah, which is Rahmah, because some of us, if they live long, they will sin because they never do the right thing. May Allah make us among those who live long and do a lot of good. I mean, yeah. may Allah make us among those who live longer, but do a lot of good. Never ask Allah long life without good deeds. Always say, Ya Rab, give me long life and good deeds. Help me to do good. Like this class. Either you are teaching or you are listening. Sadaqah, siyam, salat, umrah, whatever, whatever you can. All right? Good. What else about Iram? That al -Iman. I have a question on Iram. Uh, do we know the number of population of them back then? No, we don't know, but they were not by the thousands. Because it, the population was still being produced. But they were magnificent in their archaeology, uh, in their architecture, in their engineering because they had irrigation system. Yeah, they were really great. But kafir, that's their problem. And arrogant. Even when Hud السلام, told them, Inni alaykum yawmin I am really worried for you, and I am afraid that Allah may hit you with a very severe day in punishment. They said, bring it on. That's it. So how did Allah destroy Ad, by the way? Wind. He sent the wind. Seven days and eight nights. On a Wednesday. A western wind. Wind that blew from the west. So be careful. Whatever comes from the west is not good. Serious. That's why... Uh, Subhanallah, in North Africa, in the Mediterranean, if the wind is westerner, fishermen don't go to the sea. If they see the wind coming from the west, they said, don't go fish. They know. They know. 
you're going to have trouble or, or sink. Your sh ship will sink. Rough sea. Okay. It started on a Wednesday. It ended on a Wednesday. The wind of Prophet Hud a.s. Do you know what does it mean, strong wind for seven days and eight nights? Allahu Akbar. Sisters and brothers, the wind was hot. You know what? Sisters, take your uh, hair dryers and put it maximum and put it on your hair, but don't move your hand. And see what will happen to your hair. It will burn. So what happens to the body that receives the wind? Hot wind. It dries out from fluid. You dry. No fluid. Khalas. Wind. And if this wind is not just a normal wind, it's hurricane. Typhoon. Usadi fits, Usadi fits very well. Uh, now we are ah. talking about the wind. It, it fits very well, Ustad. You just mentioned the wind of Africa. Then you also mentioned the Noah's Ark in Turkey. So Alexandria, which also not very far from Turkey, would be the best place for, the, for this item, I think. All the three fit in very nicely, Ustad. The North African... Oh, that's, I don't mind. I don't mind. Aram, whether it's Alexandria or Pakistan, Karachi or Algeria, it's not the point. The point, Allah had great creation, gave them power, gave them money, gave them everything they needed. Instead of thanking him, they went and did terrible things. But the strongest actually is Yemen. And you know, I'm not Yemeni. I am Algerian. So as long as I didn't say Aram is in Algeria. Just listen to me. Why? Why? Because Allah said Ad. Once he said Ad, we know Ad lived in Yemen. If he didn't say Ad, if he didn't say Ad, if he just mentioned the city, Aram, maybe, maybe we say Alexandria, Damascus, uh, another city. But the fact that he said Ad, we all know Prophet uh, Hud was in Yemen. This is why um, the super majority of historians and ulama of tafsir say it is. It is uh, Alexandria is a Roman city, by the way. And it's not very ancient compared to other cities. Alexandria, Alexandria. Who made it famous? Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great is actually, even, it's not even Roman, he's a Greek. Greek Macedonian. He's from the Mont Blanc, um, Black, Black Mountain, Montenegro. Monte means the mountain. Negro means nigger, black. So that's what made Alexandria famous. And the Romans, the coming of the Romans after the Greeks, but Alexandria doesn't have big history like Yemen or like Mecca or like Jerusalem. Alexandria, no doubt it has history, but its history is not as deep in the ancient. Yeah, and those days, Dr. Dr. Saeed, if a person is 12 meters, his footstep will be one kampung to one kampung. <laughs> yeah. They will walk. They will travel. Mm. You and me, when we walk 100 feet, that's one foot for them. Allahu Akbar. They were big. They were just, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, salam. 
She, you know, um, um, you said just now there's strong wind for a people of art. And then during um, Prophet Noah alayhi salam, there was this big flood as well. So the strong wind was before or after the flood? No, after. Oh. No, uh, uh, hood, hood. Okay, oh, it's like hood. follow me, follow me. Adam is the first prophet of Allah. Oh, after. it's hood. Yeah. Prophet. Ah. ah, okay. After Adam came, Idris, Enoch, alayhi salam. After Idris came Nuh, alayhi salam. After Nuh came Hud, alayhi salam. Hud was sent to Ad to remind them not to make mistake. And he reminded them of the flood. He told them, your forefathers were with Nuh, alayhi salam, and Allah saved them. Don't make the mistake of the people Allah drowned. They still didn't get it. He told them, your forefathers were good men. They were with Nuh, alayhi salam. Allah saved them. Why aren't you like your forefathers? Mu'mins, Muslims. Why did you allow shirk to live amongst you? And be thankful to Allah. Don't waste whatever he gave you. They said, no, it's not your business. Don't tell us what to do, what not to do. Okay. Thank you, Sheikh. So in that order. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now let's see the dwellers of Arras. The dwellers of Arras. Who are they? Yamama. Do you see Yamama on the map? Here is Arabia. Here is Yamama. Yamama is towards the Arab Sea, this one, the Gulf, the Arab Gulf, here it is. Here is Yamama. This is very important historical place, which is today very close to the Eastern part of Arabia, Saudi Arabia. And it's close to Qatar, huh? this, this part is called Yaman. Let's find out what Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us. Although some historians say Al Yamama is near Hadramaut, Yemen. So some say it's in the Eastern part of Arabia, some say in it's in the western part of Arabia. They differ. Like some people say, it's Azerbaijan. The point why Allah never mentioned exactly the place, unless it's very important, like Mecca, like Medina, like Jerusalem, is that he wants us to learn the lesson from that thing, not necessarily that place. Because places can change. People can change, times can change, but behavior is that what Allah looks at. The behavior, how you behave with whatever Allah commands. You accept and obey or you rebel and reject. The dwellers of Ras, Ashab Ras, who are they? And what did Allah say about them? Let's see. Brother Khairil, go ahead. Welcome, Shay. Waalaikum salam. The dwellers of Arras. The dwellers of Arras are mentioned twice in the Noble Quran, and also Ad and Tamud, and the dwellers of Arras, and many generations in between. The night before them, these pagans of Mecca, the people of No, Noah, and the dwellers of Arras and Tamud. In the Arabic language, Aras means a well that is lined by stones. It is said that in the above mentioned verses, a specific well is being referred to, a well that belonged to a subdivision of the Tamud tribe. The members of that subdivision or subtribe were known as the dwellers of Aras. Some say that they were given that name because they threw the prophet that Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them into a well. Some scholars of tafsir believe that the dwellers of Aras and the people of the ditch who are referred to who are referred to in the Quran, Surah 85 verse 4 are one and the same people. It is also believed by some that they live in Al-Yamama in a town called Falaj. Very good. There is a town called Falaj in Saudi Arabia. Some people say the people, the city, its old name was Arras, Ashabur Ras, the people of the Ras. What is Arras? Arras is a well that is made of rocks. When people dig the well, they will put rocks around it until the top. Then they cover it. Whoever needs water comes and take water from it. It belongs to uh, a subdivision from the tribe of Thamud. Thamud are the people of Saleh, alayhi salam. Prophet Saleh was sent to Thamud. This division was living in near Al Yamama, in the city today called Falaj in Saudi Arabia. What's the story of these people? Allah sent them one prophet. He didn't mention his name. They threw him in the well and killed him. Allah sent them a prophet to remind them that the shirk is haram. Stop the shirk. Stop worshipping idols. They didn't like him. They threw him alive into the well. He died. Allah poisoned that uh, well, and well, the water became intoxicant to the extent that in one tafsir, when they pull water, it's black, black water, like tar, na'udhu billah, because they have killed an innocent human being, a prophet of Allah. So Allah said, I have destroyed Ad and Thamud and the dwellers of the Ras and many generations in between. There are many generations Allah destroyed because they, they always belie their prophets. Whenever Allah sends a prophet, they belie him. Ad did that with Hud alayhi salam. Thamud did that with Salih alayhi salam. Ashab al-Ras did that with their prophet. Allah didn't mention which prophet. And many other generations, we don't know. Allah said, there are many generations I didn't tell you about them. Allahu Akbar. But what's the common thing between all these people whom Allah destroyed? Belying the prophets. They, not, they didn't in, only reject the faith. They said to the prophet, you are a liar. You're a magician. You are this, you are that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yalla. This is why the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was rahmah. No more collective punishment. Just the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being sent, it means destroying people like Allah used to. Allah has stopped because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came. Mercy. So individually, yes but not collectively. Before, if people belie the prophet, all the Oran Kafir will die. Now, no, only few. Thank Allah, that ended because Allah sent his mercy, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam at steam and kathir. All right, so you have those two verses from Surah 25 and Surah 50. وَعَادًا وَثَمُودًا وَأَصْحَابًا وَأَصْحَابَ الرَّسِّ وَقُرُونًا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ كَثِيرًا And the other ayah كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَثَمُودٍ So there was a people called Ashabu Ras mentioned in the Quran. Their geography, their atlas is Middle East again. All right? Very good. Now, let's see another qawm, another qawm, ahli, people. The Malays use the word qawm, so it's good, alhamdulillah. 
the same as in Arabic. Tubba. Pay attention. Tubba. There is a kaum called Tubba. There are people called Tubba. Where they were? Let's find out. Kaum Tubba, according to some historians, they lived in Yemen and they moved to Mecca and then they went to Samarkand. Samarkand, in near Bukhara, where Imam Bukhari comes, yes, long time ago in history. Kaum Tubba, long time ago. We are talking about centuries. We are talking about tens of centuries ago. We are not talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi time or Prophet Musa Alayhi Salaam, even before that. So they were, they moved from Yemen, mainly from Sana'a, dwell a little bit in Mecca, and from Mecca they moved towards northeast. North east and Bukhara there is a city called Samarkand and that's why there is a great alam called as Samarkandi yeah. Uzbekistan Tajikistan Turkmenistan that area central area okay let's see who they are and what they have done Brother Muhammad Ishar, the people of Tubba. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum The people of Tuba, are they better or the people of Tuba and those before them? Uh, excuse me. Tuba. Tuba. Ah, Tuba. You have to stress Tuba. Sabdu. Ah, Sabdu on the Ba. Very good. Tuba. One more time. The people of Tuba. Tuba. Very good, correct. Are they better or the people of Tuba and those before them? We destroyed them because they were indeed Mujrimun, disbelievers, politics, sinners, criminals. Mm. And the dwellers of the wood and the people of Tuba, every one of them denied their messengers. So my threat took effect. Tuba was the title given to the ruling king of the Himyaria nation in Yemen. All of the succeeding kings of that nation later became known as the Atababia, At plural of Tuba. The most important of those kings was Hassan ibn As'ad ibn Abiqab, who is said to have lived 12 centuries before the beginning of the Christian calendar. He conquered many lands, northward until Asham, Syria and surrounding regions, eastward until the lands of Turkestan, and he even conquered Samarkand. The Tuba, Hassan, chose two cities to be the capitals of his empire, Ma'arib, in which the famous dam of Sabah was built, and Zufar, it is said that he was the first to put a covering over the Kaaba. Mashallah. So these people took back, were really powerful. Their leader, his name is As uh, Hassan ibn As'ad ibn Abi Karb. I repeat, his name is Hassan, not Hassan, sorry. Hassan As ibn As'ad ibn Abi Karb. He was a great ruler from Yemen. This person actually was the first person to cover the Kaaba. He honored the Kaaba. He covered the Kaaba. And he lived 12 centuries before Jesus, peace be upon him, was born. He didn't live for 12. No, no. He existed 12 centuries before Isa salam was born. So if we do the math today, 2022 years after Isa salam, 
add 1,200 years, 3,222 years ago. This man existed. What did he do? He conquered Samarkand. Allahu Akbar. He went all the way to Samarkand. We cannot even walk to the masjid, some of us. From Yemen to Samarkand, do you know how many kilometers those days? He crossed the deserts. He crossed Iraq. Look at the map. Look at the map. Look at the map. From Sana'a all the way to Mecca. Do you know how many kilometers? Then from Mecca, you cross Najd all the way to this place here in Iraq. And then he continued his march with his military until he conquered Samarkand. They were great. They were not lazy sitting only in the palace, Makan Minom, Tidor, waiting for death. They were doing things. That's why Yemenis are very, very travelers. They travel. That's true. It's in their genes. Wherever you go, you, go, you find a Yemeni. You go to the, uh, to the moon, you find the Yemeni sitting there. I'm not exaggerating. And somehow they are uh, gifted with business. Subhanallah. Anything they sell, people buy. It's in their blood. It's in their gene. MashaAllah, our Yemeni brothers and sisters. For Henry Ford, you know Henry Ford. You, you know Henry Ford or no? The guy who made the, one of the billionaires of the world. The famous car, Ford, for him to bring Yemenis all the way from Yemen to Detroit, USA, and give them job. He was not playing games. He saw something in them. Do you know that or not? Go to Detroit, you find Yemenis. Their forefathers, great grandfathers were brought to work with their hands, make cars. Mr. Henry Ford, what made you choose those people? So the labor. Laborers were brought from Yemen. Whoa. So for sure he saw something in them. He studied them, their psychology, their sociology, whatever. And I'm talking about in the beginning of the last century, when, when Ford started making cars. OK? Anyways. And alhamdulillah, I'm not Yemeni. Otherwise, people will say Sheikh is praising Yemenis because he's Yemeni. Or he's married to Yemeni. Takbir. OK. But is the truth. Is the truth. All right. So today, there is a lot of talk about Yemen, mashallah. So these people of Tuba. Allah said in Surah Al-Dukhan, أَهُمْ خَيْرٌ أَمْ قَوْمُ تُبَّعْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا مُجْرِمِينَ Are they better? Or the people of Tubba' and those before them? We destroyed them because they were indeed mujrimun. So they were great, no doubt, in moving, going, traveling, but they were mujrims, they were crimin. They did not believe in their prophets. Any prophet Allah sent them, they did belie him. So Allah destroyed them. So Tubba are from Himyar, the tribe of Himyar in Yemen. And later on, they were known as a tababi'a. Tababi'a, plural of Tubba. Where is this person? Or oh, from Tab Tababia. And they were powerful people. They were people of war. They were warriors. Otherwise, they wouldn't even reach Mecca, let alone uh, cross Arabia and go across Iraq and cross what is today Iran, 
and go to Central Asia. Maybe only the snow stopped them, by the way. Maybe only snow stopped them. Cold. Subhanallah. So their leader, his name is Hassan ibn As'ad ibn Abi Karb, was a conqueror. Allah also destroyed Tubba. So Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu are your people stronger than Tubba? Quraysh is nothing compared to Tubba. Tell your people to stop because we destroyed a, some people they know very well. Who are they? Tubba. Ahum Khairon Am Qawu Tubba. Oh Muhammad, tell the Quraysh, are you stronger and better than the people of Tubba? What are Tubba? Allah destroyed them. So he can destroy you too. Oh Quraysh, stop it. Stop harassing the Prophet. That was the message. Oh Muhammad, tell Quraysh, who is stronger? You, Quraysh, or Tubba? Tubba is stronger than you. You don't even have an army. Quraysh didn't have an army. And you know why Quraysh never had an army? Because no one will ever dare to attack Mecca. So they didn't need. Only when they were against the Prophet Sallallahu that they tried to form an army to kill the Prophet Sallallahu and stop his da'wah. But they never thought of having an army before. Because they were safe. They were safe. When you feel safe, you don't build an army. The nations that build strong armies are nations who have challenges. Pakistan has strong army because India is the problem. China has a big army because the United States. United States has big army because afraid of Russia and China. And the bully. Bully always take care of his power and look. Yes. But when you are peaceful, you don't need so much power. Okay. So this man, Hassan ibn As'ad, the leader of Tubba was the first one to cover the Kaaba. So he was given that honor because the Kaaba had only rocks. He thought of covering it. So he brought, he ordered the sewing and he covered the Kaaba. Since then, the people started covering the Kaaba out of respect. All right, we stop here, inshallah, my dear brothers and sisters. May Allah benefit us with the two, three beautiful stories and the geography, the atlas of Iram, that al Imad, between Oman and Yemen, and the dwellers of the Rus in Eastern Arabia, near what is today, Zahran, Khubar, the cities, if you know Saudi Arabia a little bit, near uh, what is today Qatar, and the people of Tubba, who were conquerors, who traveled north from Yemen to Mecca, covered the Kaaba, and from Mecca, they kept moving towards the northeast and conquer all the land until Samarkand, which is, I believe, Tajikistan, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Any question, please, before we end and make dua, inshallah. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Salam alaikum. You mentioned that uh, the, because of the mercy of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no collective punishment now. Although we had bigger pharaohs like French killing millions of people in Algeria and other nations, 
equally killing thousands and millions of people. So how is this mercy of Allah protecting this cruel nation? Very good. Very good. What the British did in India and Pakistan, what the Americans have done in Vietnam and in Afghanistan lately, what uh, the Russians did in Afghanistan, what the Serbs did in Bosnia Herzegovina, what the Buddhists are doing in Rohingya, what the Chinese government is doing to the Igor Xinjiang area. What, 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 what? You are right. What the British have done in, to the aborigines of um, Australia and New Zealand, what the white man has done to the Red Indians in North America and Canada, you're right. I am saying it's not the atrocities that have ended. The punishment of Allah to the atrocities have stopped. So the, the, the human behavior will always be there, good or bad. Whether humans do good or bad, it's always going to be there. But how Allah will pay the evil ones collectively has ended. That's the mercy of Allah. Why? Because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent. Muhammad himself وسلم, is the mercy of Allah. That's why Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Oh Muhammad, we did not send you except as a mercy to mankind. The ulama said, mercy to mankind, not only in following him, even if people don't want to follow the prophet, the fact that in dunya, he is a mercy. Allah will not punish all Americans because they have killed Iraqis or Afghans. But Allah will punish some Americans. Allah will punish some British. Allah will punish some French, but not all the French. That's what ended. A nation like France, all Allah, for example, wipe it out of the map, it's not going to happen. Some French, however, will be, Allah will punish them somehow in dunya by the hands of uh, people, by, 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 by destroying their, their ships, their planes, their whatever they do. But as a nation, like Fir'aun and his people, all of them, Yalla, Bunkus, the people of Saleh, Thamud, all of them, the people of Ad, all of them, the people of Lot, السلام, homosexuals, and anyone who supported them and had the free, what you call that? Uh, understand them. Bunkus like the wife of Lot, with them. Although she was not one of them, she just open-minded, so-called open-minded. You have to be op open-minded. When Allah says something is sin, you have no right, you and me, to speak about it. When Allah says this is haram, you and me don't exist. Our opinion doesn't exist. If Allah says something is haram, then it is haram. That's what matters. A lot of people say, well, we have to understand people are free. You are free. Allah created you to worship him. You are free to choose coffee with, with milk or without milk. Coffee with sugar or without sugar. But you are not free when Allah says, pray five times a day. I'm free to pray or not. You are not free. If you don't, you go to hell. But should I drink water or milk? I am free. That's where you are free. We got it all wrong. Freedom of religion. Who said freedom of religion? There is only one religion. You follow it or you go to hell. Simple as this. But you drink, you drink milk or you drink tea. You are free. So in adat you are free, but not in ibadat. In my adat, yeah, Allah, People got it all wrong. So why did, why, why is Allah your God then? Tell your boss, I'm free to work or not. You still have to pay me. Tell him that. 
tell your boss, I'm free to come or not. You just pay me. He will tell you, excuse me. Some of you are laughing, right? You got it, finally. We are free in wearing like this, like Sheikh Zubair, or wearing uh, Sonko, black Sonko, this, or you are free. But you are not free to say if there is another God or not. There is only one God, Allah. Five times you pray or you go to hell. Ramadan, you fast or you go to hell. Zakat, you pay it or you go to hell. Ram, Hajj, you must go to Hajj. You do your best to go to Hajj this year, all of you, those who didn't. What are you waiting for? Bismillah, Niya, make Niya now, Ya Rab, tonight. Ya Rab, in this night, after class, Sheikh Zubair, I make Niya of Hajj and start working for it. Especially those who are, listen to me, those who are in the West, like America, like Britain, like you have the chance to go. All you need is money. If you live there, very easy to go to Mecca. Here in Malaysia or wherever we are, Muslim world, you have to wait, you have Tabung Haji, Tabung this, you guys just find that this Yalla, Bukus, go to Hajj, do your Hajj. What are you waiting for? Alhamdulillah, already been heard, um, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless. Serious sisters. And don't say, Sheikh, I don't have mahram. 45 and up, you don't need mahram. According to the new Saudi law, they give you visa. Go. But go in a group of sisters. Go with a few sisters going with their husbands to take care of you. Maybe Allah will give you a husband there. You never know. Ya Allah, sisters who are not yet married. Sheikh, uh, on the same question just now, Sheikh. On the same question, Shay, I also heard, if you can correct me, if my understanding is wrong, that the coming of Rasulullah also meant that uh, Allah will not send malaikat to do punishment, but it will be done through the Muslims who will punish the uh, non-Muslims. Correct, correct. <clears throat> yes. Allah will not, for example, for example, if anyone now wants to destroy the Kaaba, Anyone want to go and destroy the Kaaba? Can they destroy the Kaaba? Yes. If any army now wants to attack Mecca and destroy the Kaaba, Kaaba will be destroyed. Why? Why Allah is not going to protect it like he did with Ashabul Fil? Because in the time of Ashabul Fil, the Prophet was not even born. He was born that year. One year after that incident, he was born. Number one. Number two, what do two billion lousy Muslims like you and me do when we have all these weapons? Why there are 2.0 billion Muslims, lousy, makan minum tidur? We supposed to defend the Kaaba because there is Islam now. At that time, Allah defended because there were no Muslims. The Prophet was not even born. So the Muslims must defend their holy land, like Jerusalem. Allah can defend Jerusalem by himself. You think Allah will cannot just send the ants on the Jews. They will eat the, the ants, only ants. Lousy Muslims fight for Palestine. Get up and pray and fight like real men. You're going to die only one time. Good point. So if Allah wants to punish some people, he will send strong warriors on them, Muslims. Like Allah punished the French through the Algerians, punished the, Af uh, the, the, the Russians through the Afghans, punished the Americans through the, Af punished the Americans through the Iraqis. Ha, ah, what do you think? Americans were driven crazy in Iraq. You just don't know because the, they always hide. They say, we don't know, we were fighting jinn. We're fighting jinn. You're fighting real Muslims. Americans uh, withdraw from Afghanistan for no, no reason. Huh. They couldn't. But the media doesn't show heroes of Islam until later. 
Okay. Yalla, don't forget what we learned. We learned three beautiful atlas. The atlas of Iran, that will Iman. The atlas of the dwellers of the Ras, which is a, a well in the desert. And the atlas of the people of Tubba, Qawm Tubba. May Allah bless me and you with this wonderful stories. Amen. Keep coming and learning, inshallah. Amen. May Allah reward Dr. Saeed and Amen. all Amen. the brothers who asked questions and commented. Amen. And for all of you to listen, may Allah grant shifa to all my brothers Amen. and sisters who are sick. Allah may Allah Allah reward you, Ustaz. Amin, Amin, Amin. Allahumma shifaa shafi shifaa la yuqadiru saqama. Allahumma arham mawtal muslimin. Allahumma aghfir dhunubana wa astur uyubana wa amin rawatina wa salli allahumma wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmin. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum